Peritonitis, Wikipedia article audio. Peritonitis is inflammation of the peritoneum, the lining of the inner wall of the abdomen and cover of the abdominal organs. Symptoms may include severe pain, swelling of the abdomen, fever, or weight loss. One part or the entire abdomen may be tender. Complications may include shock and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Signs and symptoms Causes include perforation of the intestinal tract, pancreatitis, pelvic inflammatory disease, stomach ulcer, cirrhosis, or a ruptured appendix. Risk factors include ascites and peritoneal dialysis. Diagnosis is generally based on examination, blood tests, and medical imaging. Treatment often includes antibiotics, intravenous fluids, pain medication, and surgery. Other measures may include a nasogastric tube or blood transfusion. Without treatment death may occur within a few days. Approximately 7.5% of people have appendicitis at some point in time. About 20% of people with cirrhosis who are in hospital have peritonitis. Abdominal pain The main manifestations of peritonitis are acute abdominal pain, abdominal tenderness, and abdominal guarding, which are exacerbated by moving the peritoneum, e.g., coughing flexing one's hips, or eliciting the Bloomberg sign. Rigidity is the most specific exam finding for diagnosing peritonitis. The presence of these signs in a patient is sometimes referred to as peritonism. The localization of these manifestations depends on whether peritonitis is localized, or generalized to the whole abdomen. In either case, Pain typically starts as a generalized abdominal pain, and may become localized later. Peritonitis is an example of an acute abdomen. Other Symptoms A diagnosis of peritonitis is based primarily on the clinical manifestations described above. Rigidity is the most specific exam finding for diagnosing peritonitis. If peritonitis is strongly suspected, then surgery is performed without further delay for other investigations. Leukocytosis, hypokalemia, hypernatremia, and acidosis may be present, but they are not specific findings. Abdominal X-rays may reveal dilated, edematous intestines, although such X-rays are mainly useful to look for pneumoperitoneum an indicator of gastrointestinal perforation. The role of whole abdomen ultrasound examination is under study and is likely to expand in the future. Computed tomography may be useful in differentiating causes of abdominal pain. If reasonable doubt still persists, an exploratory peritoneal lavage or laparoscopy may be performed. In patients with ascites, a diagnosis of peritonitis is made via paracentesis, more than 250 polymorphonucleate cells per muel is considered diagnostic. In addition, gram stain is almost always negative, whereas culture of the peritoneal fluid can determine the microorganism responsible and determine their sensitivity to antimicrobial agents. Complications in normal conditions, the peritoneum appears grayish and glistening, it becomes dull 2-4 hours after the onset of peritonitis, initially with scarce serous or slightly turbid fluid. Later on, the exudate becomes creamy and evidently suppurative, in dehydrated patients, it also becomes very inspissated. The quantity of accumulated exudate varies widely. It may be spread to the whole peritoneum, or be walled off by the omentum and viscera. Inflammation features infiltration by neutrophils with fibrinopurulent exudation. Causes Depending on the severity of the patient's state, 
the management of peritonitis may include Infection If properly treated, typical cases of surgically correctable peritonitis have a mortality rate of about 10% in otherwise healthy patients. The mortality rate rises to about 40% in the elderly, or in those with significant underlying illness, as well as cases that present late. Without being treated, generalized peritonitis almost always causes death. The stage magician Harry Houdini died this way, having contracted streptococcus peritonitis after his appendix ruptured and was removed too late to prevent spread of the infection. Non-infection Risk factors Diagnosis Pathology The term peritonitis comes from Greek pi epsilon rho iota tau nu alpha iota omicron nu peritona and peritoneum, abdominal membrane, and itis inflammation. General supportive measures such as vigorous intravenous rehydration and correction of electrolyte disturbances, antibiotics are usually administered intravenously but they may also be infused directly into the peritoneum. The empiric choice of broad-spectrum antibiotics often consist of multiple drugs, and should be targeted against the most likely agents, depending on the cause of peritonitis. Once one or more agents grow in cultures isolated, therapy will be target against them. Gram-positive and gram-negative organisms must be covered. Out of the cephalosporins, cefoxidin and c can be used to cover gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, and anaerobic bacteria. Beta-lactams with beta-lactamase inhibitors can also be used, examples include ampicillin-slash-sulbactam, piperacillin-slash-tazobactam, and ticarcillin-slash-clavulinate. Carbapenems are also an option when treating primary peritonitis as all of the carbapenems cover gram-positives, gram-negatives, and anaerobes except for ertapenem. The only fluoroquinolone that can be used is moxifloxacin because this is the only fluoroquinolone that covers anaerobes. Finally, Tigecycline is a tetracycline that can be used due to its coverage of gram positives and gram negatives. Empiric therapy will often require multiple drugs from different classes. Surgery is needed to perform a full exploration and lavage of the peritoneum, as well as to correct any gross anatomical damage that may have caused peritonitis. The exception is spontaneous bacterial peritonitis which does not always benefit from surgery and may be treated with antibiotics in the first instance. Treatment Prognosis Etymology Openabdomen.org, Peritonitis, Medical and Surgical Therapy Reviewed